Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Years, and I am here today with a brand new video. If you can't tell, I am aboard a gorgeous Disney Cruise Line ship, the Disney Dream to be exact, and we're gonna be talking about the must-dos on a Disney Cruise Line, specifically the Dream, and oftentimes the Fantasy, as those are sister ships. So I'm gonna be talking about some of my favorite restaurants, some of the activities, some of the cruise exclusives. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Are you ready? Are you excited? I sure hope so. Let's go. Ahoy, mateys. It's pirate night. This is a super fun thing that they do one night on Disney Cruises where the entire ship transform into a pirate adventure. They even play pirate music throughout the uh, ship as opposed to regular Disney music. All of your characters are dressed up in pirate gear and they have special characters like Captain Jack and Captain Hook come out. They've got pirate themed menus. Bippity Boppy Boutique becomes the Pirates League. They have pirate entertainment and even pirate fireworks. It's encouraged for you to dress up. They do give you sashes, but you should definitely bring stuff from home or if you forget, they definitely have things in the gift shop. I'm so excited to check out Pirate Night, and if you're not ready to have fun, then it's time to walk the plank, mateys. the pirate deck party it was so fun there's a little show first and then they do the fireworks which i asked a couple cast members where to stand and they said deck 12 port side which was amazing i had a perfect view so passing that little tip on to you deck 12 port side but confirm with cast members because they obviously always know what's up and then the deck turns into club pirate where they have a whole pirate dance party so i think pirates night is a blast literally put those fireworks on your bus too one of the cutest things on board is Vanellope Sweets and Treats Shops. It's a candy shop themed after Wreck-It Ralph, which is one of my favorite Disney movies. If you can't tell, I'm beyond thrilled to go in here. But it's super, super cute, and they've got all these crazy decadent treats, cupcakes, cookies, all kinds of goodies sundaes. We're obviously going in here to look at it. But look, it's Vanellope! The first thing I see when I walk in is Vanellope's race car, which is so adorable and it's got sugar rush in the background with some of the racers looks like that's taffeta mutton fudge i want to say that's ranch's flutter butter over there this one probably oh there's candlehead obviously she's got that candle on her head that's probably minty zaki don't quote me could be swizzle malarkey could be jubilina bing bing no jubilina bing bing's red but yeah, that's very cute. And then you've got King Candy. Next to King Candy is Vanellope herself, hanging upside down on the striped tree. Not the double stripe though, that means you'll fall. Now for the treats. You've got tons of ice cream and it's kind of foggy. I wonder if I can do this. No, I cannot. Look at these crazy gelato flavors. They've got like Fruit Loops in that one. This one's got candy just straight up on there. That one's got Snickers on it. This one has cupcakes on it. This is the craziest ice cream ever. Looking at some of the artisan sundaes, you get, oh, the Family Challenge has six scoops. The Go-Kart has three scoops. Then there's a King Candy Sunday, Hero's Duty, Taffeta Sunday where you can do milkshakes. And as you can see, everything in here is a little bit of additional cost. 
All the racers are listed here. Oh, it's actually the menu. Oh, it's so cute. I can't. Along the back wall here, there's a bunch of candy that you can get bagged and then pay per ounce. This isn't what I would do because it's going to be much more expensive than just buying this candy. Buy what everyone thinks. I am not a cough drop. Sorry. Oh, please wash your hands. Thank you. Will do, Sour Bill. In addition to ice cream, they've also got cookies. Look at Captain Minnie on that cookie. Oh my gosh. They've got specialty treats. Oh, there's a Captain Mickey cookie to match. And then they've got bakery cases full of incredibly looking deliciousness. There's this Beauty and the Beast cupcake, birthday cupcakes. We're getting close to Easter, so we're already throwing that theme out. How adorable is this nautical navy one? Oh my gosh. Then we've also got some macarons. Look at that little Easter basket. These are so cute. We've got fudge. I don't even really like donuts, but look at this chocolate Nutella donut with the characters on it. Over here, we've got a Wreck-It Ralph cookie with the characters on it. Chocolate covered strawberries, bonbons. This little nautical navy eclair. Giant cookies. I truly am beside myself with how adorable this place is. I don't know what to get because there's too many things that look so great. This is what the Rouse Family Challenge looks like. It's six scoops of ice cream and six toppings, and you get to keep that sweet cup because you will be a champion and you deserve a trophy after you eat that. I just realized up above the bulk candy, it's the stands like in the movie where all of the candies have made stands out of boxes, and then that's how they watch the Sugar Race Racers. Um, sliced strawberries. Um, caramel corn. Sprinkles. The prettiest ones. <laughs> um, Mickey. And then the. Can, am I allowed to get that Wreck It Ralph like? Thing. Oh, okay. But the circle, I can get the circle? Oh, I get one more topping? Mini Oreos. Let's just do it. Let's just get weird. Oh, it's so cute! Here's my incredibly adorable race car. I got oatmeal butterscotch, toffee, espresso, and strawberry, chocolate covered strawberry. But if you look at the car, it literally has the little icing signature from Ralph and Vanilla B. And you get to pick five toppings in addition to the chocolate, like, decals, the cherries and the whipped cream are included. So I additionally got strawberries, caramel corn, sprinkles, mini Oreos, and there's Twix bites in there too. That toffee espresso. This is the cutest ice cream ever. And you get to keep the car. And she, my customer told me to come back for a car wash when we we're done with it. This is definitely a must do. I am so excited because I'm about to ride the Aqueduct. The Aqueduct is a water roller coaster around the cruise ship. See, it's in these like tubes, and you get in uh, tubes. And it's one to two people, and you go all the way around the ship, and it seems like it's gonna be amazing. I'm so excited. You have to be 42 inches to ride it at all, and 54 inches to ride it alone. And it is really popular, so make sure to get here early, or do it at one of the port days when everyone's off the ship. Like, the pool is like empty, because uh, we're at a port day. But I'm very excited to ride the aqueduct right now. This was seriously like the number one thing along with brunch that I was excited for on this ship, so I cannot wait. I 
am super excited because we're about to have dinner at Palo. Palo is one of the signature restaurants on board the ship and it is an, ad an additional cost. They have brunch and dinner, both are $40 per person. And then of course any alcohol you get is extra on that. But it's an Italian restaurant, it's absolutely gorgeous. And if you're someone who likes fine dining, you definitely should look into booking Palo one evening or one morning for an extra special meal. And I'm really excited. They do have an additional, for an additional 65 per person, you can do this six course menu and it comes with wine pairing at each course. So that could be fun. Or if you're just doing the $40, um, you can pick from any of these appetizers. Our server let us know that the Caprese and the uh, Trippin Soup were the two of the most popular things. Then they've got pastas, meats, seafood, some vegetarian dishes. Um, but the great thing about these restaurants is if you wanna try more than one, go for it. You can order as much as you want. For an amuse-bouche, they brought us a little potato gnocchi with a mushroom sauce, and it looks incredible, and it smells really good. I'm just like holding all my drinks. Wow, that is delightful. Mm. Oh, that's incredible. So mushroomy. And a tiny spoon. For my starter, I got the caprese, which our server recommended, and I'm very excited about because it's got big chunks of fresh mozzarella and big juicy tomatoes. Mm. Whoa, that cheese is so good. That is like fluffy, delicious mozzarella. And I'm about to eat a lot of pasta, so to have something nice and fresh before is amazing. Don't ever stop. <laughs> we could be here all day. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's perfect thank you so much for my entree i got this butternut squash basically ravioli and it's got fresh mozzarella cheese and basil and a brown butter sauce and then they do the fresh grated parmesan cheese and it smells incredible i'm very excited to eat this wow that is like almost dessert quality, but that is so fresh. I know they make the pasta back there, fresh every time. Big chunks of cheese. <laughs> this is fabulous. He also said that whatever's in the brown butter sauce is so secret that the chef won't tell anyone. And I can see why, it's fabulous. For dessert, I got the limoncello tart, and it's actually made with limoncello, which I quite enjoy, so I assumed I'd like the tart. Plus, it's a little bit lighter, hopefully, less rich than after such a big meal. Mm. That is perfect. It kind of reminds me of like a key lime pie, texture-wise, but it's got that nice bright lemon. Graham cracker crust, delightful. Palo was absolutely fabulous. Everything I ordered was amazing. Everything that everyone at the table ordered was amazing. And I definitely think it's worth the $40 upcharge. It's just a really special experience. Our service was fabulous. And if you're looking to make your cruise even a little bit more special, have a little date night, have an anniversary, I really recommend spending that because $40, like this is a signature level meal in the park. So I really think it's worth that. And it's super popular. So if you're interested in Palo, make sure you book it in advance before you get on the ship to guarantee you've got a dinner one night. But Palo, I'm a big fan. One thing you definitely have to do aboard a Disney cruise ship is meet the characters. Duh, you're on a Disney cruise. And they have a lot of fun character meet and greets happening right aboard the ship. You can check where the characters are gonna be using the Disney Cruise Line app when you're on board, connect to their Wi-Fi. You can use that app, you can favorite who you wanna see and they'll send you reminders. It's really, really great, but you've got to meet the characters when you're on board because it's possible that Mickey and Minnie are even cuter at sea. I know. Make sure to get in line early for the characters. Goofy was supposed to be out at 10.30. It's only 10.28 right now, and he actually came out a few minutes ago, 
and the lines will get really long really quick. Last night, the line for Mickey was like wrapped all the way around this balcony, so I would make sure to get in line like at least five, ten minutes before the scheduled time. With all of the characters, so far they have had a professional photographer. Now your photos aren't included, you can purchase them, there's packages you can purchase. There's also a character attendant with each character and they will take your phone and take video and photo on your equipment as well. So don't worry, but there is a professional. If you get the package, that'll be all included. I think so. I'm sending you to all my friends. Fantastic. Well, that sounds pretty magical, just mm -hmm. like pixie dust. Mm -hmm. And I see you have some pixie dust in your ears today. Yes. Have you been using it to fly? No. Not no, yet. you haven't been. Well, you are wearing a blue dress just like my friend Wendy, so you must yeah. be thinking lots of happy thoughts. I am. Does, I'm right? on this beautiful cruise ship. Have well, you seen any pirates, though? I haven't. I okay. saw one friendly pirate earlier, but okay. I haven't seen Captain Hook anywhere, so that's we good. We should be on the right? lookout. Definitely, look out. He might steal your pirate treasure that you have here. Hold on to it. Yeah, just in case. Yeah, okay. he's always trying to cause trouble. I'll look out for him. Lost boys. Definitely. Can we now, take a photo? Of course. Let's Thank do it. You. Let's think some happy thoughts together. One thing that you got to know is that some character meet and greets actually require you to pre-book reservations and get tickets just like you would a shore excursion. And one of them is the princess party. So you can see here we've got Tiana, Rapunzel, Belle, and Cinderella. And all of these guests pre-booked the reservation before they got on board. You can always check when you get on board, but most likely the tickets will be sold out. It's not an additional fee or anything, but that does guarantee that you get to meet the princesses and you have a lot of time. So if you've got little ones that want to meet the characters, it's actually pretty great because you know at nine o'clock or 9.15, you're going to meet them all. We'll have to wait in a minimal line, but it's something very important to note and that's something different than at the parks. It's the last night of the cruise and they had like a character goodbye thing, but it turned out that that meant a character meet and greet. So all the characters were announced, came down the stairs, and then they all scattered for about 20 or so minutes of meet and greet. So you had to get really quick in the lines. They weren't going to do a bunch of pictures, a bunch of different groups, but I was able to meet Mickey, Pluto, Minnie, and Daisy in like 15 minutes. So if you see the farewell party on your, on your list, on your navigator, definitely check it out. It's a good spot for characters. Another thing you have to do on a Disney cruise line is see the entertainment. This is Disney, it's the best entertainment company in the world and the cruise line is no different. Their shows that they have on board are exclusive to Disney Cruise Line. You're not gonna see them anywhere else. They're not in the parks, they're not on YouTube. You literally can't even take photos or video in there. Um, so I can't even show anything to you because I don't wanna get kicked off the boat trying to film these shows. When, I was, uh, when I'm on the Disney Dream, there's three different shows. It's a three night cruise. Each night has a different one. There's the Golden Mickeys, there's their version of Beauty and the Beast and then there's another show called Believe. Now each night they're gonna have two different showings of the live productions and they batch up with your dinner so if you've got early dinner you can go to the later show if you've got later dinner you can go to the earlier show so that way you never have to choose between eating at one of the restaurants or going to see the productions but again these are amazing Broadway quality productions some of them have exclusive music and exclusive costumes and they're just gonna be amazing and they're gonna be full of Disney magic and your heart's gonna be full of pixie dust and your you're probably gonna cry. Maybe that's just me, but I don't think so. I am at Palo for their brunch, and I'm super excited because I love brunch, and we ate dinner at Palo last night, and it was amazing. So I'm sure their brunch is just as fabulous.
like dinner. Brunch is a $40 upcharge. It's also 18 and older, so sorry kids. Time for the kids club. This is for mom and dad. But it is, the service is incredible. The view is incredible. There's big windows that you can see outside. They don't offer this every day. And it's something that you're gonna wanna book in advance if you can, or right when you get on the ship, go to the desk, uh, the guest services desk, and they may be able to book you a brunch or the dinner reservation. But it's very, very popular. And it's a very, I'm very excited about it. But everyone I've talked to is like, go to Palo Brunch. That's the one thing you have to do on the cruise, so. Here I am. A very important thing to note about Palo at any meal time is that there is a dress code. You're not able to wear your pool clothes in here. They also request no cutoffs, no bathing suits, no flip flops. So you wanna kinda consider this a signature restaurant as you would at Walt Disney World. So you don't have to get super fancy. This isn't like a black tie meal, but gentlemen you're probably gonna want to wear like slacks and a polo or a button down ladies a, a dress or some nice slacks uh, flats wedges heels something like that but just know you, if you plan to dine at Palo or Remy um, you're gonna need some fancier attire included with brunch is a complimentary cocktail you can choose from Prosecco which is Italian sparkling wine or you can get a mimosa with it which is when they add in the orange juice so cheers Oh, that is good. I actually don't normally like mimosas. I like other drinks, other juices, but that you can tell is fresh. It's got good sparkling wine in there. Mm, this is the perfect way to start brunch. In addition to the menu that you order off of, and you can order as many things as you want, but keep in mind there's also an all you care to enjoy buffet here at Palo during brunch. There's a couple different tables. There's one that's like all different decadent pastries. There's ones that seafood, including things like crab legs and caviar and tuna niswa salad. There's also one that's an Italian theme station, which is basically like a giant charcuterie. And I could just eat that and be happy and spend the $40. But they also have a dessert one that's got little, uh, little tapas size desserts of all different kinds. So this is an incredible value for only a $40 upcharge. And you can do that. Uh, you can order off the menu a couple things or one thing if you want to be sensible and then you can go to the cold bar as well here's a few of the things i grabbed off the the cold bar there's some arancini this is a blue cheese and walnut bread that sounded interesting and the server said was amazing the hot sticky bun is they said their signature thing and a lot of people come just for that there's some prosciutto wrapped asparagus an adorable little orange muffin and then I got a bunch of the meats and cheeses from the charcuterie as well as a little uh, caprese and there's uh, I'm not a huge seafood person but there's like crab legs and all kinds of crazy stuff up there and honestly just going to that cold bar would be worth the $40. I'm gonna get into a few of these things. I'm gonna start with this blue cheese walnut loaf which I've never seen a pastry like a sweet thing use blue cheese before so Mm. Mm. Wow, that's actually incredible. I love blue cheese. It's not super aggressive, but if you don't like blue cheese, I wouldn't even try it. However, I love the crunch from the walnut on there, and then the blue cheese is absolutely amazing on there. I would not have thought to do a pastry like that, but I'm glad Paolo did. I'm gonna try the arancini now. like a risotto ball and it's a delight I'm also gonna get a bite of this sticky bun Look how gooey that is Whoa. my family loves making sticky buns my great aunt makes arguably the world's best sticky buns this is the only one I've ever had that rivals it. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Creamy, good crunch on the asparagus. Yeah, this bar is incredible. Now I'm just gonna eat meats and cheeses. This green one is marinated in herbs, he said. Mm. Oh. Yeah, and this pink one was marinated in tomatoes. Oh, 
that is amazing. Wow. So far, this is incredible. Like, I'm so impressed with this cold bar situation. And my real food's not even here yet. The first thing I got was an Eggs Benedict. I love an Eggs Benny. And I can't resist it. And look how good that hollandaise looks and that nice chunk of ham. And I'm glad this is a little bit smaller portion because I got another entree coming. Wow. Thanks, Benny. It's a classic. And it's not always done right, but this is gooey gooey egg, which is one of my favorite things. The ham isn't too salty. <clears throat> The English muffin is crisp just enough. My friend ordered the margarita pizza because our server was telling us about the legend of Queen Margarita. And I had to try it and it's amazing. It's drizzled with olive oil and you can literally taste that there's high quality olive oil on here. Fresh tomatoes, bunch of cheese, Simple perfection, and I know you're thinking, I didn't go to a fancy brunch to eat pizza, but I cannot recommend this enough, and it's easily shareable if you got it for the table. But wow. My sweet server said, I have a dessert that's not on the menu and it's not on the buffet. And I said, bring it on. So it's this triple chocolate lava cake. It's got the chocolate sauce, chocolate cake, and when I cut into it, it's gonna be chocolate oozing out of it. Mm. It's so decadent. <laughs> and despite being chocolate on chocolate on chocolate, it's and it's very rich. It's not like overwhelming. Like I could eat a lot of this and I'll, sometimes chocolate desserts like it's too much, but. Wow. Wow. Palo, absolutely fabulous. Both brunch and dinner were absolutely incredible. I fully believe they're worth the $40 upcharge. I think I'd be willing to pay much more. And I like that it's an adult only adventure. So if you're not sailing with kids, it's still an adult exclusive, nice thing. And if you are sailing with kids, it's a nice break to do something a little bit fancy, just the adults. And the kids are gonna be having a blast in the kids club. So I absolutely think you have to come to at least one, if not two meals at Palo while you're on the Disney cruise. If you're a big kid, read an adult on the Disney Dream, then you have to come to the district. This is the adult only party town at, on the ship. So there's a couple different clubs all within this one district, hence the name. There's Evolution, which is the dance club. There's the district lounge, which has live music. There's Skyline, where it shows famous skylines of cities around you out the window. And then every 15 minutes, the window changes along with the artwork and the music and the specialty cocktails and takes you to another famous place. It's really cool. There's also Pub 687, which is like an Irish pub theme. And then there's Pink, which is a champagne bar, which makes it feel like you're inside a champagne bottle. They're all amazing, they're all awesome. You can find whatever kind of entertainment, whatever kind of vibe you want, it's gonna be here. But I definitely recommend checking out the district. So we're gonna do that right now. And just like that, we're in Rio. I was about to order a New York cocktail, but now I gotta do the Rio thing. This is so, so cool. It happens about every 15 minutes. The music changes, the artwork changes, and then of course the view out the window changes. They also have a special menu for each of the different cities. So if you look, we're in Rio now, and then there's three different cocktails, specialty cocktails for Rio, but we were just in New York. And you could also do one of these New York cocktails when that's on the screen and so on and so forth. I did ask the bartender and he said he would absolutely make you anything that you want even if you're not in that city at the moment or it's a full bar so you can get anything you'd like but I think it's more fun to get something that matches what adventure you're on. 
So I wasn't really jazzed by any of the Rio drinks, so I waited until it took us to Paris to order something because I wanted the drink to match the theme. And this is the Martini Royale. It's Grey Goose Creme de Cassis. Cassis, I can't say that, and champagne. And it doesn't normally have a glow cube, but I asked kindly and the bartender gave me one because it's just fun to have a glow cube. Oh, I'm glad I waited for France. That's amazing. Of the bubbles from the champagne, a little sweet from the creme de cassis, cassis. It looked like a purple syrup, which is what's giving it this pinkish color. So I'm assuming it's some kind of fruit. Oh, he ho, there are men whose hearts who are as black as coal. Yo, ho, he ho. Wow, they're playing music from Muppet Treasure Island, and I am very excited by it because IMO, that's the best Muppets movie. You can fight me in the comments, but it's a treasure. <laughs> oh my god, that was a really good joke. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> a really cute detail about pink is that the mascot is an elephant, which I can't confirm or deny, but my assumption is that's named after the pink elephants on parade in Dumbo, because that scene is because Dumbo has a little too much to drink, and then he hallucinates the pink elephants on parade. Now, they're not allowed to associate Disney characters with alcohol officially, but my assumption is that's why it's called pink. And if you watch the bubbles on the wall, the pink elephant will show up in the bubbles occasionally. But you gotta be quick. There he is. There he is. Yay, we got him. Oh, and he's gone. This champagne trio, and you get three pours of some fabulous champagne in this cool gold holder. And again, just a really fun bar, something to try a little bit different. And our sweet bartender's hilarious. He was lining this up for me because he totally knew I'm just doing this for Instagram and for video purposes. So he lined it all up with the lights in the background because he's a sweet angel. But mostly I just got this to point out how fun this bar is. And yeah, definitely on one of my favorite bars at Disney I've been to. Will Molly spend too much time in the district and not realize the Disney dream is docking at Castaway Key? Or will she simply get lost at sea? Stay tuned to All Ears TV for more of Molly's cruising adventures on the Disney dream. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.